Right, so we're going to edit this video. Now all I'm going to do, let me just throw my headphones on because I'm going to need them. I'm not going to edit the whole video in front of you because that would take probably about an hour, hour and a half, two hours. But we'll show you a couple of tricks. So in HitFilm Pro, and I'm using HitFilm Pro because there is a free version out there called HitFilm Express. HitFilm is not sponsoring my video in any form or way but it's the only one that I know of that's got a free version so you can actually have a go. Um, so it gives you, it asks you first of all for your project settings. I'm gonna select 4K footage and I'm gonna use 29.97 frames per second. Now this is important in regards to what footage you've filmed. If you're not sure though, don't panic. The audio, I'm going to use 48,000 hertz because I know that is what my Tascam, little Tascam microphone records at. And I'm going to click OK. It takes a few seconds to open. And the first thing I'm going to do is import the footage. So click on Import. And I've got three files from the Tascam, so I'm going to open those double click in an empty space my Osmo bits uh, I'll take one or two from here so I'll take that one uh, that one that will do GH5 in fact I'll leave the GH5 don't need it so I've got a few files there now I mentioned at the start if you're not sure of your frames per second on here it will tell you what your frames were filmed in whether you film from a mobile phone so don't think this is too technical you can also do this with mobile phone footage it will tell you so i've got 29.97 frames per second and the actual audio from the camera was 48,000 hertz as well as well as my tascam footage if your settings are wrong for the film go to file whoops file project settings and as you can see, you can change it here before you start, all right, or any time. Uh, the audio, blah, blah, blah. Mine are correct, so I'm going to leave it as, I, as it is. Now, this is your main timeline. This is where you do all your work, where you join things together, where you alter your audio, synchronize your audio. But I know for a fact, when I filmed this, I did three or four takes. So I want to have a look at the actual bit I want to keep. So I'm going to double click this file and that will open up the trimmer. In the trimmer then, I need to find out the part. Oops. Let's just have a quick listen where we are. Hello. Yes, so that's the bit I want. That was pure luck. So we'll go from there. Now you've got a start and a stop, an in, a start and a stop of your footage or an in and an out point, I think it's called, with my dodgy glasses, set in point, set out point. So I want to set the in point there, I'm going to play it through. Hello, welcome back. How hard can it be to actually make a video when you're filming on your own, making sure you get every aspect of video making correct? For a one time special offer, I'm going to take you behind the scenes to show you the viewer the one viewer <laughs> how i actually go about doing that so first of all though roll the tiles cut and set the out point and as you can see on the timeline here it's got rid of the rest not got rid of it but it's hidden it we're going to left click and drag it to the timeline it's asking me the sizes blah 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 of your video is different to the actual thing ignore that I'll show you what I do with that close the trimmer for now and I want to make this footage now fit into my editing scene so I'm going to right click transform fit to frame job done okay now the audio from the video is not bad hello but I noticed on the meter it's hitting around about minus 18. I want it to be a bit higher. I could just raise the audio here. You see where it says 
Welcome back. And when you play it, it's louder. However, when you do that, the other thing that's louder is the wind noise, the birds and everything else. So what I'm going to do, as I mentioned during my video, I recorded this onto the Tascam microphone, which is under my shirt. You can just see the thin cable there that's making me look like I've got a fat belly, but the cable's about that thick. Tascam footage, double click. And I think it's going to be around about here somewhere, just out of experience. Hello! Certainly is. Fast forward a bit so we don't have to listen to it all again. <laughs> How I actually go about doing that. So first of all though, roll the titles and cut. Set the out point. It's highlighted the bit I want. Now to put that audio to synchronize it, I want to create a new audio layer. We do that by right clicking here, insert track, and I've got a second audio thing. Drag that down using left click and hold. Close the trimmer so you can see what we're doing. And now the fun part. I need to make sure these marry up. Now the way we do that is we increase using the slider here, we zoom in basically. And we're looking for these waveforms, something that we can actually marry up. Now I believe that these are the same thing. So I'm going to zoom in even more. And I'm trying to put this peak here with this peak here. That's not bad actually. The more you zoom in, the finer the adjustments are that you can make. Back. How hard can it be? Right, it's not perfect, but it's not far off. We'll stick with it. So we've got two lots of audio now, which is we don't want. As you can see here, the, the meter, the audio meter was peaking, so it's gone red. Um, so I want to remove the audio, the original audio. Now these two are joined together. Like when you select them, they both highlight. So the, what I do now is I unlink them and then reselect the audio from there and I can delete it. This one move up and to protect so if, if I was to move this now it would move the video separate to the audio so what I want to do is select them both right click and yes you've guessed it there is an option to link them together so whenever I move this one now the audio goes with it all right to actually make a video when you're filming on your own so that is the audio synchronized and replaced. That's the first bit. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna color grade this color grade this video. The, the color from the camera is not bad. However, on the day, the sky was a little bit more bluer and I want to sort of replicate that. Lots of ways to color grade. You can apply a LUT, which is what I call a lookup table, which is a pre-made file that alters your Color. In fact, let's have a quick look at one of those just to show you. Go to color grading, join in the effects panel. In the color grading panel, there is an option called LUT. Left click, hold, drag it to your video, and nothing's happened to the video. Why is that? It's asking you for a LUT file. Now, LUT files you can get one or two, you can get quite a few free online. You can also pay a little bit of money for them, they're not expensive. Uh, let's open one of the ones I've bought previously. All my paid stuff is in here and let's go with um, a company called Film On. Film On, for those of you who make, make videos will know Film On, they're a fabulous organization. They have got here from different films various different color grades from those films 
let's use the good, the bad and the ugly for example. Um, gives me three options, I've got a full a full colour, contrast and lighting change, I've got the colour only and the contrast change only. Let's try the full one first of all, see what that looks like. Bump, right. Yeah, so I've now got the same colour scheme that they used in the film, the good, the bad and the ugly. If it's too much, you've got a scale here where you can reduce it. However, I don't want to use a LUT. What I'm going to do is do a manual colour change by using in the effects colour correction. I am definitely going to use a thing to change the exposure because I want to bring the shadows up in a moment and I'm also going to use my, one of my favourites which is the YUV colour corrector. That gives me three wheels plus brightness plus vibrance or saturation to play with. Now as I say I'm going to try and get the sky a bit bluer so I'm going to click on here move this around a bit without going too much see if I can bring the colour up a bit more it's a bit too much because the sky the clouds have started changing colour that's not bad let's just see if I can bring the grass a bit more greener And the last one, I don't think I'm going to do anything with. I think I'll leave it. Right. By changing the colour scheme, I've got a slight bit of uh, the highlights are blown out there. So I'm going to go to the Exposure Pro thing that I've used. I'm going to bring the shadows up first of all slightly. Vibrance. I'm going to drop slightly. Saturation up slightly minor 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 adjustments right don't go whacking it out there because it'll just look horrendous slightly underexposed still but anyway gives you the general gist of it some people make the entire video join it all together edit it render it create a film and then afterwards re-edit and do colour grading for the whole film. The only reason I wouldn't do that in this particular pro project is because I've filmed from two separate cameras. I, I use the GH5 and I use the DJI Osmo. So I want to make sure that I can individually change those two camera profiles. However, if I, if I was to import now another bit of footage from the DJI, all I would simply do is highlight those copy and I could paste it onto the clip. So that's colour grading in, an, in a very very short nutshell. Takes a lot of practice to get it right. Right let's link, sorry let's, let's add another clip and I'll show you how to do a transition using HitFilm Pro. So we just uh, close that down again, go back to the media, double click so we can edit where we want to start from. In fact, that's the wrong clip. So import. Where's the one I wanted? That one. Double click. There we go. Waffle, 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 waffle. Let's go from there. I want to go from there, I think. Start, <coughs> play. Unless there was something unusual to happen behind, like I don't know, herd of elephants or something, dinosaur, it's going to remain too dull to actually keep the viewer's attention. That will do. So I've done start and stop, drag it onto the timeline, close the trimmer so you've got more space to work in. Right click, transform, fit to frame size. In fact, we can do the colour grading thing now, so I'm going to go back to that one. Controls, 
highlight them both, copy, right click, paste here, boom. See what I mean? Color grading done in a nutshell. <coughs> now the audio here is going to cause me a problem. As you can see here, the waveform on this particular clip is really, really low. There is a way to fix that using to pre-edit the audio. However, that is a very long subject, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a bit of audio guesswork. This is one of the reasons I wear headphones while I'm editing. Um, so first of all, I need to find the Tascam audio. I think it's going to be near the end here somewhere. Trial and error. It's somewhere there, right? because it will make you make your subject squint let's go with that for now I so, saw it's going to remain too dull to actually keep your viewers attention and there we go drag it to the audio 2 close your trimmer Dull to actually keep the viewers' attention. Zoom in. So attention was the last word. Attention. Your viewers' attention. It's not far off. Viewers' attention. have a look bear with me it's yes it's a pretty scene uh, however it's boring there's nothing happening um, unless the slightly off right I've got a little all oh, matron I've got a little waveform here I can probably use to line up even that that one is even better so I'm going to zoom in think we're on um, unless there was something unusual to happen behind like that will do nicely okay just to remind you then right click unlink right click delete or remove increase that so we've got matching audio all the way through in fact firstly we want to move that up very carefully highlight the two right click and link we have now glued that audio to the video but make sure it's not too bright because it will make you make your subject squint okay transitions then to make your video look a bit snappier a little bit more modern the way to do that is add a transition there are some horrible ones out there on the market so be very careful with your transitions with HitFilm Pro you have some built-in ones so in the, again in the effects panel transitions video you've got various different pre-made ones here different types of dissolve different types of motion don't use motion and definitely don't use clock wipe unless you're making com uh, commercial for some school. Um, zoom, in fact, let's use cross zoom. Cross zoom's fairly good. Left click and hold, drag, and try and put it between the two videos. If you miss, you can zoom in, highlight it, and actually move it again, all right? Cross zoom. It gives you a basic timing for it. If you want to change how much of how long that transition lasts, you can grab one end of it and it will symmetrically drag it out like so. So you can make it go a little bit slower. It's a little bit too long. Right, but that's a basic transition built in to this program.
very easy to apply and there we go so we've covered color grading transitions the final one I want to show you is how to add a very simple uh, titles or text to a video you can just remove put that back to normal two seconds you can just use the text tool here so you've got a little text tool put on there how to vlog highlight it go to the text panel make it bigger by sliding it change the color of the text to red how I vlog or how to vlog as you can appreciate very amateurish so I don't want to do that you don't want to do that we want to show you the fancy professional way using this program go back to your media panel and instead of importing I want to create a new com composite shot click on that we're going to call it intro text or intro titles leave these settings the same apart from the duration you don't want the titles to run for the whole duration of your video you probably want it for about five seconds so we do five or six seconds there we go click OK and it opens a new panel down here an, em an empty composite composite shot so we want to do a new layer a text and it's tiny in the middle but you can start typing I'm going to do it all caps how I vlog keep it simple um, in your text panel you can choose whatever texts whatever fonts are installed on your computer I've got loads um, in fact let's just highlight the whole thing and you can also use your mouse wheel to scroll through them which is a fabulous little thing to have I'll keep it at that uh, I probably wouldn't use that in reality but we'll keep it at that now the reason I do it this way with a composite shot is because you can use your effects panel again at the top of the effects you have animation let's have a look in there you see here it says text layer only in brackets which is exactly what we've just created a composite shot is a text layer if you do it the other way the first way by simply typing on top of your video you won't be able to add any animations to it okay uh, I don't know these off by heart so I'm just going to I'm going to pick one and use it. Uh, let's go with evaporate. Left click, hold, drag it to your text, and it does it for you. Let's have a quick play through. How I vlog. It was a bit quick, so let's make it. So, yeah, as you saw there, sorry, I'm rushing through this. As I played it, it came in a little bit too fast for my liking. So, you can open it up and change the reveal length so I want to change that to a bit longer let's go for a quarter of the way through the six seconds and conceal length will make fairly short let's just try that again and it should vanish fairly quickly there we go right I'll, I'll stick with that go to your editor and where is it you ask right it is made prepared in your media box so it's here so the way we do this to add it we're going to create a new video track so right click on video track insert track and you can see here we've got the new layer drag that across put it to the start of your video and I want to reposition it so I change that to a cursor 
I think we'll be able to just move it. Yes, we can. Put it up there. Put it to the start of the video and let's have a look how that looks. Hello, welcome back. How hard can it be to act? There's your first titles done in about four minutes. That's because I'm talking though, you can probably do it in about a minute once you get used to it. The last bit of course is you wanna be able to save what you've done and actually make a video. Two ways of telling the program where your video ends. You can either right click here and say set to contents and it will go to the very last part of your video for you. Or you can just slide this blue line and line it up where you want it to record to. On the export button, it'll ask you two, three questions, sorry, two questions, the in out area. So do you want it to pick the blue line where you've chosen? Or do you want to record everything that's in this timeline? In this particular case, I'm gonna go contents, go to export, change this, I wanna record it into uh, Ultra HD. I'm gonna call it Test Edit 2 because I did a previous one which was horrific. Test Edit 2, save and start exporting. I hope I didn't bore you to tears throughout. If you have any questions about anything to do with video editing, special effects, tricks, Drop them in the comments below. I don't get many comments, so go on, be one of the first people to send me a pleasant comment. <laughs> um, but until next time, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.